probably the single most important property that you're going to set on your transaction log is the location of that transaction log. If you know people in real estate, they'll tell you really quickly that location is the number one thing that adds to the value of a piece of property. And it couldn't be more true for a transaction log. Let's look at a little picture here. If I've got a database stored on a disk, okay, and for the purposes of this, let's just say we've got a single disk. Okay, I know that's not real world, but we've got a single disk and we've got our database loaded on it. If we have our transaction log on the same disk, guess what's happening? The database, the disk is spinning to make writes into the database and to read and select from the database and update the database and make deletes and so forth. At the same time, our transaction log is having to be written and read from, and so the database is trying to spin. We have read and write contention going on on that disk because both the database and the transaction log are disk intensive, and they're both trying to take advantage or both trying to get time to be read from or written to. So the single best thing that you can do is simply put the database on one physical disk, put the transaction log on a separate physical disk. Better yet, different spindle. If you're using some sort of RAID environment or a cabinet or array, whatever, then you want to make sure that the transaction log is separated in every way from the database files, the read and write files on that. What kind of difference can this make? Well, in tests, Microsoft has seen up to a 40% increase in efficiency on disk times when the transaction log and the database files are totally separated from one another. Now, in a lot of RAID environments now, uh, this is minimized quite a bit because you have so much data being strapped across so many different disks. But again, just be aware of this and watch it and make sure that these two aren't stepping on each other. Now, let me show you. I'm going to go out to the um, Server Management Studio and show you how we could have avoided this hassle and that is simply when we create our database. Let's right click and create a new database and I'll show you exactly where. We create a new database called uh, Mark Test and notice, I'm going to make this wider so we can see it. Notice right out here we put on here, notice the path of our data files. Okay, so the data files for our database is going to be on the H drive, okay, and it's going to be in the MSSQL, the Microsoft SQL Server MSSQL data, okay, on the H drive. We need to put the transaction log on some other physical location, okay? So I'll just put it on E. Okay, but that's the way to set this up. Do not put that transaction log on the same spindle as the rest of your data files. You can avoid tremendous, tremendous disk read and write issues by doing that. So location, location, location for that transaction log.